All right, Jackson, thanks so much for sending this in and, and being a part of 212 Athlete. You do a great job of, of sitting into that back leg. Um, let's look at it here from this angle. Um, you do a pretty good job. Um, I want you to watch. Eh, it looks pretty good. I want you to watch how early you separate that hand um, and that arm comes up. Um, I think you could could hold that together a little bit longer um but you know that's that's not really what we're looking at um anyway so pay attention to that that back arm that might that might uh hold on to that ball might help a little bit you're about 92 degrees into that back leg squat so you squat very very well that's positive let's look at your back leg into um release point looks pretty good you're releasing the ball here your, your leg comes up a little bit, and your hips have to come up and over instead of just rotating. I think uh, part of that issue is that back leg or that back heel doesn't rotate this way. If if if, if it could rotate up and up and around, you, the pressure in your toe is good, um, but that but that back heel needs to rotate. That's going to help that hip rotate as well. Um, so power to the back leg, not necessarily a huge issue, but how you rotate your hips, that, that, that is an issue. Um, and so that's something that you can, uh, definitely work on with box row one, box row two, uh, walking torques, uh, walking windups, that's going to help. So that moves us on to the next one at, at plant foot. I'm going to measure this angle. <coughs> Excuse me. At 103, so um, you do you do a good job of, of of driving off that back leg, but it could be that much longer. I'd like it to be uh, over 110 degrees. Um, so there's there's more. You, you put your foot down just a little early, um, and I know you can get a little bit further, but 103 is pretty pretty darn good. So let's look at the next next one: internally rotated front knee, and that's definitely something that you have. Um, so your hip can't rotate until that knee gets over that ankle. Um, and so that's part of the issue. Part of the issue is your back leg. Part of the issue is your front knee. So that front knee inhibits that, that hip rotation. That's a huge issue um, that, that is going to really force your, your hips to, to go up instead of through. You can see how they go straight up, and they should just come straight through this way so definitely want to be able to internally rotate this this back back hip and the back foot the, the foot should come up and over so that's that's huge um so internally rotated front knee that's a that's a issue um let's look at the angle at foot strike and the angle looks pretty good 137 it should be a little bit higher than that so this front knee is going to suck back almost like a like a straight brace front leg um that's something that you can improve on that front knee um that'll help a lot box row one box row two hooks um walking torques um are really going to focus on that front leg and that's going to help a lot um all right so that's the lower half um we're going to look at posture at ball release Posture at release point. So your posture, um, this would be an A, this would be a B, and this would be a C. You're at a B posture. All that means is that when you come back and your posture is here, and then all of a sudden you have to change posture to there, you know, that's a that's a big head movement that we want to minimize. So all, the only thing I would change back here is I would... Bring that spine back a little bit to to there. If if I if I started if you started your head back a little bit, you'd be able to minimize. You go from here to there, and it would it would minimize a lot of that rotation. Um, when we talk about rotation, we talk about axis. And so if if you know if the Earth changed axis, the rotation would suffer. And same thing with a helicopter. If if the if the shaft that rotates the blades, um, 
shifts axis, it would throw off everything, uh, you know, the, the, the flight path. So it'd be really hard for them to do that, um, uh, to, to rotate. Same thing with your body. You need to be able to rotate around your, around your front side. Um, and that hip definitely forces you to pop that hip up or pop that leg up. So we need to rotate that back leg, that back heel, um, get into that front leg. The front knee needs to come back a little bit and change your stay back a little bit longer with your chest because you go from here to, to back. So if I just started back, it'd be, be a little bit easier, which leads us into stacking. Um, and this is something I think you could improve on a lot. Um, this head wants to stay behind that rubber. If you can push that butt out that way and this head stays back a little bit, you're going to be able to maintain this, this upward posture um, longer by staying back and then being able to, at plant foot, drive everything through. You look pretty good, but it could be, it could be that much better. Um, so stacking, uh, lower body's fine. Your upper body needs to stay back a little bit longer. Um, there are drills for that stacking, um, 45 degree knees. Um, and then all the other, all the, all the other drills, just, just try to stay back as long as you can. Which leads us into the front glove. You see where your elbow goes. It goes straight down that front glove. And I want to see more, more rotation this way a little bit. Um, and what that does is it'll suck this front, that, that front knee is the issue, honestly. And once the front knee's, uh, solidified, then you're able to, to, to rotate that, that, that upside. Um, so the lower body is going to, if, if I have a deficiency in my lower body, it's also going to be a deficiency in my upper body. And that's where that glove comes in. So definitely need to work on that glove for sure. Um, that's an issue. Now, everything looks good right there. And then it goes straight down, and I don't, I don't provide any rotation. We just need to be a little bit firmer this way. Okay, um, we're gonna look at um, high elbow as you rotate through. It looks pretty, looks pretty connected. Um, I'm gonna measure both shoulders, and then off to your elbow. We're 100, right on a straight line, which is nice. Um, that's not an issue, um, so that's good. Uh, no high elbow. Um, and then the chest extension right here. You can see it. This front knee should have, should have sucked back and this heel rotated around. You can see the delay in your body. All that energy is going right into that front knee and it could be going out of the chest. Um, we need to d redistribute the energy from your knee and put it back up into your, into your body, um, and out your arm. So uh, let's look at chest extension at release point right there. So back hip, out to the shoulder, about 49. So your chest extension is great. And the reason why your chest extension is so good is because that back leg is, is on the ground um, or it's extended. So that, that weight distribution on your backside allows your chest to go through. The only thing that I would change is this front knee needs to solidify a little bit earlier. But chest extension looks great. So no issue there. <clears throat> I think it's a front knee issue. A um, little bit of a hand fly out, but it's not, it's not huge. You actually get through that ball really well, um, which is great. So... Uh, no big hand flap. I appreciate you sending these in. Um, you know, the, the biggest things that I see out of the, is uh, that back leg, the front knee, the front glove, um, and the stacking. Um, and that's, you know, four or five miles an hour that you could gain um, on top of the velocity that you'll gain from crossover symmetry and, and the weighted ball. So um, thanks so much for uh, sending these in, and I'll talk to you soon.